Good evening. Welcome. I have some announcements to make before we get to the testimony. I'd like to welcome you to this public hearing of the New York City Rent Guidelines Board. This is the third of five public hearings to consider comments concerning proposed rent adjustments for renewal leases for apartments, lofts, hotels, and other housing units subject to the Rent Stabilization Law of 1969 and the Emergency Tenant Protection Act of 1974. These can't hear in the back. It's on. Let me try. Is that better? All right. Uh, these adjustments will affect renewal leases commencing between October 1, 2018 through September 30th, 2019. I will now take roll call. Please respond if present. Hillary Botin. Present. Rodrigo Camarena. Present. Shayla Garcia. Leah Goodridge. Is Leah here? Oh, she, she's here. She'll be here shortly. Uh, Cecilia Hosa. Present. Angela Pinsky. Present. David Reese. Present. Scott Walsh is not present. Kathleen Roberts present. Let the record show that we have a quorum. Uh, for to members of the of the board, please note that drafts of both the hotel and apartment explanatory statements are in your folders. We request your comments uh, on and or suggested additions to the statements no later than the morning of June 20. Revised drafts will be sent to you via email by Friday, June 22nd reflecting additions resulting from the public hearings. If you have any questions, please see Andrew. The next meeting of this board will be a public hearing on June 19th. In all, there will be two more public hearings to comment on the proposed guidelines. They will be held on the following dates, times, and locations. Tuesday, June 19th, the Great Hall at Cooper Union, 77th Street, at the corner of 3rd Avenue in Manhattan, 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. with interpretation available in Spanish and Mandarin. Thursday, June 21st, 2018, the Oberia D. Dempsey Multi-Service Center Auditorium at 127 West 127th Street, New York, New York, uh, from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. with interpretation available in Spanish. <coughs> Directions to these hearings can be found on our website, nyc.gov slash RGB. Pre-registration pre to speak at these hearings has begun. You can sign up by calling the Rent Guidelines Board offices at 212-669-7480, then press zero to register. For further information, see our website. And as always, there are copies of our meeting schedule here tonight. The final vote will take place on June 26, starting at 7 p.m. It will be held in the Great Hall at Cooper Union, 77th Street in Manhattan. I'd like to thank you all for attending this public hearing. The board is looking forward to hearing from many of you regarding the proposed rent adjustment guidelines. Based upon the testimony we've heard in previous years, we know that many of you here have concerns about housing conditions and various aspects of rent regulation that may be beyond the mandate of this board. In order to help address these concerns, we have here this evening for the first time in the history of these hearings, representatives of the New York City Department of Housing, Preservation and Development, and the New York State Homes and Community community renewal who are available to answer questions and provide advice. They are located in the lobby. The board very much appreciates their willingness to participate in these hearings. Before we proceed with testimony, I would like to go over the rules and procedures for those who are testifying before the board. If you wish to speak, you must confirm your presence with the RGB staff at the registration table located near the entrance of the hall. Speaker registration ends at 8 p.m. Speakers will not be called if they have not checked in at the registration table. There is a Spanish interpreter here today. When registering to speak, please notify the staff if you would like an interpreter. I will try to call several names in advance. When your name is called, please come to the front of the auditorium. If you have materials to distribute to the board, you should give them to the RGB staff sitting at the sign-in table near the entrance. I will attempt to alternate speakers between tenants and owners, but this may not always be possible. 
In order to accommodate as many speakers as possible, each speaker will have two minutes to give their testimony. An additional two minutes of speaking time will be given to those speakers utilizing interpretation services. To help speakers keep track of their time, we have a clock. We will start the clock when you begin speaking. The clock will beep once when the speaker has 30 seconds left and will continue beeping when the allotted two minutes are up. If you are still speaking at the end of two minutes, I will ask you to quickly wrap up your testimony. We expect many speakers and the board wants to hear from as many speakers as possible in the limited time we have for this hearing. We understand it may be difficult to say everything you want to hear in just, you want us to hear in just two minutes, but please understand that it is our responsibility to make sure that everyone who's taken the time to come here and testify will have a fair opportunity to be heard, and we thank you for your cooperation. At this time, I'd like to ask our interpreter to uh, translate my announcements into Spanish. Thank you. Les damos la bienvenida a la audiencia pública del Comité para de Regulaciones de Alquiler de la Ciudad de Nueva York. Esta es la tercera de las cinco audiencias públicas para considerar los comentarios sobre los ajustes de alquiler propuestos para la renovación de arrendamientos de apartamentos, lofts, hoteles y otras unidades de vivienda sujetas a la Ley de Estabilización de Alquiler de 1969 y la Ley de Protección de Inquilinos de Emergencia de 1974. Estos ajustes afectarán las renovaciones de a partir del 1 de octubre del 2018 hasta el 30 de septiembre del 2019. La próxima reunión de este comité será una audiencia pública el 19 de junio. En total habrá dos audiencias públicas más para comentar las directrices propuestas. Se realizarán en las siguientes fechas, horarios y ubicaciones. Martes 19 de junio de 2018 en el, la gran sala de Cooper Union, número 7 de la calle East 7th, con la esquina de la tercera avenida en, en Manhattan, de 4 de la tarde a 8 de la tarde. Habrá interpretación en español y en mandarín. Y el jueves 21 de junio de 2018, en el centro Oberia B. Dempsey, en el auditorio, en el número 127 de la calle 127. En, el, en Harlem, el norte de Manhattan, de 5 de la tarde a 8 de la tarde, y habrá interpretación en español. Las direcciones a estas audiencias se pueden encontrar en nuestra página web, que es eh, nyc.gov slash RGB, RGB. La preinscripción para hablar en estas audiencias ha comenzado. Puede inscribirse llamando a las oficinas del Comité de Guías de Alquiler al 212-669-7480, y luego presionando cero para registrarse. Para más información consulte nuestro sitio web. Y como siempre, hay copias de nuestro horario de reuniones aquí esta noche. La votación final se llevará a cabo el 26 de junio a partir de las 7 pm. Se llevará a cabo en el gran salón de Cooper Union, en el número 7 de la calle 7, en Manhattan. Me gustaría agradecerles a todos y todas por asistir a esta audiencia pública. El comité está deseando escuchar mucho, a muchos de ustedes acerca de las pautas de ajuste de alquiler propuestas. Basándonos en el testimonio que hemos escuchado en años anteriores, sabemos que muchos de ustedes tienen inquietudes acerca de las condiciones de vivienda y varios aspectos de la reglamentación de los alquileres que pueden estar más allá del mandato de este comité. Con el fin de ayudar a abordar estas preocupaciones, este año por primera vez en la historia de estas audiencias, tenemos a representantes del Departamento de Presentación de Preservación de Vivienda y Desarrollo del, del Estado de Nueva York y, y, del, y del Departamento de la Ciudad de, de Vivienda y Renovación y Preservación, HPD. Están disponibles en la entrada para responder a sus preguntas y dar consejos en el vestíbulo. El comité aprecia mucho su voluntad de participar en estas audiencias. Antes de proceder con el testimonio, me gustaría repasar las reglas y procedimientos para las personas que van a testificar ante el comité. Si desea testificar, debe confirmar su presencia con el personal de la RGB en la mesa de registro ubicada cerca de la entrada del salón. El registro de los testigos termina a las 8. Las personas que vayan a testificar no serán llamadas si no se han registrado en la mesa de registro. Hay un intérprete en español aquí. 
disponible. Cuando se registren para hablar, por favor notifiquen al personal si usted desea hablar, eh, testificar en español. Voy a tratar de llamar a varios nombres de antemano. Cuando llamen su nombre, por favor vengan al frente del auditorio. Si usted tiene materiales para entregar al comité, debe darlos al personal de RGB sentado en la mesa de entrada cerca de la puerta. Intentaré alternar entre oradores eh, de testimonio de inquilinos y testimonio de propietarios, pero esto puede no ser siempre posible. Para dar cabida a tantos testimonios como sea posible, cada persona tendrá dos minutos para testificar. Se darán dos minutos adicionales de tiempo de intervención a las personas que utilicen los servicios de, de interpretación. Para ayudar a los oradores a hacer un seguimiento de su tiempo, tenemos un reloj. Empezaremos el reloj cuando empiece a hablar. El reloj emitirá un pitido una vez que hayan pasado 30 segundos y continuará pitando cuando los dos minutos asignados hayan terminado. Si usted sigue hablando al final de dos minutos, le pediré que por favor termine su testimonio. Esperamos que muchas personas y el comité quieran escuchar de tantos testimonios como sea posible en el tiempo limitado que tenemos para esta audiencia. Entendemos que puede ser difícil decir todo lo que usted quiere que oigamos en solo dos minutos, pero por favor entienda que es nuestra responsabilidad asegurarnos de que todos los que se han tomado el tiempo para venir aquí y testificar tengan una oportunidad justa de ser escuchados o escuchadas. Gracias por su cooperación. Thank you. The first three speakers are Samantha Bravo, Nora Huertaro, and Fabian Bravo. I think Samantha Bravo is first. Good evening. Thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Good evening. My name is Samantha Bravo. It is my third year coming here and giving my testimony, but it appears that my voice, or anyone else's for that matter, are not heard. I ask if our voices are heard like everyone says, why do we fail for you, the RGB committee, to vote for our side? We fight for a rollback in rent. We fight for the end of discrimination. We fight for the end of landlord harassment. We fight so we can spend more time with our family. We fight for the injustices pre presented to us, both outside and inside our homes. But most importantly, we fight for our voices to be heard. Like I said in the beginning, this is my third time coming here, and I am certain many people in the audience have been coming here way longer than I have. Yet we still s receive the same results, either a rent freeze or a rent increase, but never a rent decrease. The RGB committee has been filling our minds with hope and certainty that we will finally win. And when we, the tenants, get a response, we ask ourselves, do they really care for us? Because here, the wonderful city of New York is not as wonderful as it sounds. Roach slash rat infestations, mold, unfixed repairs, harassment, and discrimination, all in their homes. Did I also mention unfairness? Why is it that I, a 13-year-old, have to come here and represent my whole family? Why is it that I must have my mind filled with the next eviction notice instead of my next basketball playoff game? Why is it that many people here in the audience had to lose a couple of hours from their job? Why is it that many seniors have to come here and explain the horrors that many of you guys sitting here in front of me can't dare imagine just so they can have their voices heard? If each of you don't help us now, when will you? When will it be enough of sitting for four hours each year hearing our broken stories only to turn on us? My mind is filled with so many questions that question your motives on us. I hope that each of you sitting before me realizes the damage you've inflicted upon us. If our testimonies fail to change your mind, I promise you, I will come back here, even if it takes 10 years for you guys to get a rent decrease. Have a lovely evening. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Nora Herrera-Tero. Good evening. Thank you for coming. Good evening, RGB board. You need My to name speak Nora. as close to the mic as you can. Good evening, RGB board. My name is Nora Huertero. I live in 4065 in Sunset Park, Brooklyn, New York. I am here to let you know that high increase we affect me and my family. I work Sunday to Friday and sometimes on Saturdays when I need to get rest of the morning for my rent. 
I only get to see my children for a very short time in the in the morning and two hours in the afternoon. An increase we affect my family drastically. It will be fatal because I will have to work more hours. We are hard working families that wish to live with dignity and respect. I do not understand my landlord is entitled to an increase if she doesn't provide heat and hot water during the winter. Last month, my bathroom ceiling collapsed due to accumulation of water. There was a leak for several months, but since, by since October 2017, she's not cashing our check. The landlord has taken us to court twice for false accusation of no payments case in 2015 and 2018, and we are still in court process. The landlord is constantly her results. We deserve to live with dignity and requesting to the board that before to make a decision to please think about the families that we have to work extra hours and will not enjoy quality time with our children. My daughter, we graduate from middle school this year, but I will not be able to, to all day with her as the other families. I will have to go back work. Thank you for letting me testify and please thinking about learning, learning co family that is jungle every day. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Fabian Bravo. <coughs> Good evening. Buenas tardes. Me gustaría compartir con ustedes dos cosas, una buena y la otra no tan buena. El 0% que se aprobó en el año 2015 y 2016, a mí me ayudó mucho económicamente, ya que pude compartir más tiempo con mi esposa e hijos asistiendo a museos y a eventos de la ciudad. Good evening. I would like to share with you two things, one good and the other not so good. The 0% increase that was approved in 2015 and 16 helped me not a lot financially, but, and I was able to share more time with my wife and children attending museums and events in the city. En los últimos dos años, la dueña del edificio en dos ocasiones ha tratado de sacarnos del departamento. Afortunadamente, no ha conseguido su objetivo. But in 2016, in the last two years, the owner of the building has tried to get us out of the apartment on two separate occasions. Fortunately, she has not achieved her goal. De, de igual modo, la dueña del edificio ha tratado de aumentar la renta en muchas ocasiones, por reparaciones en el edificio que no ha hecho. Afortunadamente, los inspectores del HPD han descubierto que ella está mintiendo y por lo tanto, su petición de aumento fue negada por la agencia de la ciudad. The owner of the building has tried to increase the rent on several occasions for repairs to the building that she has not done. Fortunately, the HPD inspectors have discovered that she was lying and therefore her request for rent increase was denied by the city agency HPD. El día 29 de abril de 2018 se cayó el techo del baño debido a un goteo de agua que existe desde hace un par de años. Estas condiciones y muchas más existentes en el departamento están desde el año 2012. On April 29, 2018, the bathroom ceiling fell in due to a water leak that has been there for two years. These conditions and many more exist in the apartment since 2012. Por tal motivo, yo creo que no es conveniente un aumento de renta en estos años. For this reason, I believe that a rent increase is not convenient for these years. Si ustedes votan a favor de un aumento, significa que ustedes están apoyando a individuos egoístas y llenos de codicia que en su búsqueda de riqueza están pisoteando y humillando a los inquilinos. If you vote for this rent increase, it means that you're supporting selfish and greedy individuals who are trampling and humiliating the tenants in their pursuit of wealth. Si ustedes votan a favor. Si ustedes votan a favor de un aumento, significa que ustedes están apoyando a individuos que usan 
todo tipo de tácticas de acoso y humillación para expulsar de, de los departamentos a las personas. If you vote in favor of an increase, it means that you support individuals who use all kinds of harassment and discrimination tactics to expel people from their apartments. Yo pido lo justo. Pido una disminución de la renta para todas las personas de la ciudad de Nueva York. I ask for what's fair. I ask for a decrease in the rent for all the people of New York City. Thank you. Para esa gente digna y generosa, gente como ustedes, gentes como yo, gente como la que me está escuchando. For those worthy and generous people, people like you and like me and like the, the audience here, people who are listening. Mi pregunta es, ¿y ustedes a quiénes están apoyando? And I ask you, who will you support? Who are you supporting? Muchas gracias por su atención. Thank you. Thank you very much for your attention. The next speaker is Council Member Jumami Williams. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Well, thank you. Madam Chair and the entire board as mentioned, uh, my name is Jumani Williams. I'm here to submit testimony. also have some written ones asking for a rent freeze uh, for this year. Uh, the proposal has uh, that uh, has come down for median rents uh, in my uh, district would probably be between fifty five. Can you speak a little bit closer to the microphone? Yep. Sure. Uh, just make sure I get some more time, if, if you can. Uh, my name is Jamani Williams, a council member, and I'm I'm here to submit testimony, written and spoken in. Uh, effort to get a rent freeze uh, this year for tenants in New York City. Uh, the proposed uh, proposal right now uh, would have tenants in my district uh, paying between $55 and $75 per year. Uh, we cannot think of these I increases as abstracts. They are real human beings, tenants who are struggling to afford life in our city for them and their families. Any increase in rent means making it harder for those people to provide the basic essentials for their family. In New York City, two adults, two kids, the cost of living is $140,000. The average rent in East Flappers is $2,000, with the 40 times suggested income, that's $80,000, which is 45 times higher than the median income rent there, and even that number is on the low end. There are 17,000 rent-stabilized apartments in my district, also two years in a row with the highest number of evictions. This is not a coincidence. Over 75% of owners in East Flappers Flappers are not small landlords. Now to be clear, uh, this is the housing crisis that we have. I call it hashtag Cuomo's housing crisis. Uh, I believe it is primarily a failure. This is probably the most palpable failure of the governor uh, and uh, Albany leadership. So I want to admit that. Um, Everybody has a part to play, and the city has to do its best to provide stopgap measures while we get this fixed. That is incredibly important, and I don't want the Rent Guidelines Board to shirk its responsibility here. Uh, I mentioned that tenants are human beings, and I believe that the landlords, obviously, are human beings as well. <coughs> Um, I'm not asking for a rollback. I know uh, many people are. I am asking uh, for a rent freeze. And now, everyone is going to talk about how much they're suffering. Uh, the data shows, however, that it is the tenants that are suffering and that every year, as a, as a, together, the landlords do make uh, additional funds. Landlords are asking for 7% increases, which is obscene. Landlords uh, do continue to make money from 2015 to 16. Uh, rental income increased by 3.1%. Total income rose by 3.1%. Uh, operating costs increased by 2.5%. That's a net operating income of 4.4%. I want to make sure people make money, but we have to think about the tenants. Um, housing and the lack thereof is deeply connected to homelessness. Uh, there is nothing else that is needed beside housing. So I want to make sure that this Rent Guidelines Board understands the dire need for these tenants. I always think about owners uh, having been one, but on their own paperwork, they make money year after year. Uh, I hope that continues because I don't want anybody to starve, but the backs of people are being broken 
and that's literally happening uh, whether it's uh, ev evictions whether it is um, the, the Erstat law that we don't have preferential rent so even when you gave the rent freeze people were still losing their homes uh, the rent guidelines board needs to play their part I really hope that you do uh, and take all of our all of our all the things that we're saying view all these people behind me as human beings and families that make this city run. <laughs> Without them, we have no New York City. Um, there is a broken system, uh, and the most powerful property owners take advantage of that broken system uh, on the backs of these people behind me. And so I really hope you think of them not just as numbers, uh, but as faces. And so I'm going to say, what do we need? You say affordable housing. When do we need it now? What do we need? When do we need it? Yeah. What do we need? Yeah. When do we need it? Yeah. The city is finally beginning to start build the housing that we need. The most thing we can do is preserve. You have the power to help do that. So I hope you take that responsibility seriously. And I'll be happy to answer any questions anyone may have. Thank you. Any questions for the council member? We, we do have a question. Council member, what, what is um, the council doing to increase the supply of housing as the population of the city uh, continues to grow so dramatically? Thank you so much for that question. I think uh, for far too long the city council uh, and the administration has been failing. Uh, I voted against uh, MIH the way it was presented. I voted against a lot of things that have come before the council because of that. I think right now uh, people are finally beginning to understand that if we're going to rezone neighborhoods, if we're going to put city funds in, uh, we have to build to uh, the lowest income needed. As you know, the lower you go, the more uh, supply is needed, uh, the, more, the less vacancy that we have. And so I think at this point, we are finally starting to build the type of housing that we need. Uh, we've lost a lot of years, and we have a lot more to do. Uh, but to your question, we are never going to build faster than we're losing. And so preservation is critically important. Any plan that doesn't focus on preservation is going to be a failure plan. And that's why it's important to make sure we preserve what we have. And part of that has to do uh, with the rent increases. And I understand, again, having been ups and downs of an owner, that people, that there are owners who are struggling. Uh, the system is broken, unfortunately. And what I would hope is that some of those owners, particularly small ones, would join us in asking uh, the governor to provide more leadership uh, and that the legislature provide uh, taking away the Erstat law, the repeal of that, so that we can provide more assistance to them. But the way to do that is not to give uh, increases every single year to tenants to fix the broken system. Uh, the best way to do this is to address this uh, in Albany and deal with the rent laws. But in absence of that, the Rent Guideline Board has to take into account, uh, and it's been proven and the, they've been backed up by court, that they can take into account both what the rent landlords are going through and what the tenants are going through. And even though I know that landlords will come here, uh, when you weigh the scale, the tenants are suffering far more uh, than the numbers on the ledger side of the landlords. And we have to take that into account because the city is, you know, it doesn't survive and you see the neighborhoods changing, and you see people taking advantage uh, of these tenants who help build these neighborhoods, now push them aside and push them out. Thank you. Any other questions for the council member? I think there are no further questions. Thank you for your testimony. Thank you. Thank you very much. I just want to point out we do allow extra time for um, public officials to speak. Um, they represent a large number of, uh, of constituents. Um, our next speakers are going to be Rosario Diaz, Moises Hernandez, and Clara Joseph. Buenas noches. Me 
respetuoso miembro de RGP. Mi nombre es Rosario Díaz. Vivo en el 430 de la calle 61 desde el 2011. Estoy aquí para pedirle que no hagan aumento en la renta y para hablarle un poco del hostigamiento y discriminación que paso a diario. La casera no se merece aumento porque los arreglos que hace en el edificio no lo completa y le toma mucho tiempo aunque el caso esté en corte. Good evening to the members of the RGB. My name is Rosario Diaz and I live at 430 61st Street since 2011. I'm here to ask you to not raise the rent, to not increase the rent, and to talk to you a bit about the harassment and discrimination that I live with daily. The landlords don't, my, my landlord doesn't re deserve an increase because the repairs that she does in the building are never completed, and she takes a long time in doing them, even though the case has gone to court. En dos ocasiones me ha llevado a la corte por no pagar la renta. Es mentira. Mi renta siempre la pago a tiempo y presento todas mis, pres mis pruebas en la corte. Muchas veces no, me ha prohibido que no tenga visitantes en mi apartamento por ser hispana. Uh, un aumento grande me haría perder mi apartamento, el cual... Con mucho trabajo estoy pagando 1,576 con 20. Y la casera me ha pedido 600 más en un aumento. Alegando. Let's pause for the interpretation, please. Sí. Okay. All right. Okay. Alegando que hizo, hizo renovaciones en el apartamento. On two occasions, my landlord has taken me to court for not paying rent, and it's a lie. My rent is always being paid on time, and I presented all my proof in, at the court. Many times, she has forbidden me to have visitors in my own apartment for being Latina. A large increase would mean that I lose my apartment, which With very hard work now, I struggle to pay $1,576.20. And the landlord has asked for $600 on top of that, alleging that she did renovations in the apartment. My case has been under investigation by DHCR for two years. My landlord sent me a letter with the increase because she installed a boiler a new boiler, but it wasn't necessary. M there are many days that we have spent without heat or hot water. Okay. Mi sueldo no me alcanza para pagar mi renta, gas, luz y otro gasto. Mi hijo está trabajando y estudiando para ayudarme, pero no me alcanza a cubrir los gastos. Mi vecino y mi compañero de trabajo también sufren por el aumento de la renta, pues no hay aumento en el salario. My income does not, is not enough for me to be able to pay my rent, gas, electricity, and other expenses. My son is working and going to school to help out, but it's still not enough to cover expenses. My neighbors and friends all, and uh, coworkers are also suffering because of rent increases since there is no increase in wages. Mi sueldo no es alto. Trabajo como home attendant, cuidando personas enfermas y permanezco, pertenezco a la 1199 y estoy representando a todos mis compañeros de la Unión de Sunset Park. Es un vecindario para personas de bajos recursos, pero sentimos la presión y el acoso con un aumento in inadecuado de criminación.
My wages are not very high. I work as a home attendant taking care of sick people and I belong to Local 1199 and I'm here representing all my co-workers in the union. Sunset Park is a neighborhood for people, for low-income people, but we're feeling the pressure and the harassment with undue increases, discrimination. Le agradezco por su atención con mi corazón en la mano. Le pido que me escuchen, que escuchen a la comunidad necesitada. Nosotros no tenemos dinero ni propiedades, pero amamos nuestro vecindario. Gracias. Thank you. I thank you for your attention with my hand on my heart. I ask you to listen to the, commu to the community's needs. We don't have money or properties, but we love our neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Moises Hernandez. Hi. Hi, how are you everybody, okay? Good evening. Okay. Mi nombre es Moisés Hernández. Mi nombre es Moisés Hernández y vivo en la 6316 de la Cuarta Avenida en Sunset Park, Brooklyn, New York, por más de 10 años. My name is Moses Hernandez and I live at 6316 uh, 4th Avenue, Sunset Park, Brooklyn, New York. I've been there for more than 10 years now. Vengo con el grupo de vecinos ayudando a vecinos Hoy hablo porque el dueño no merece un aumento. I'm here today with the group Vecinos Ayudando Vecinos, Neighbors Helping Neighbors, and I'm here to speak on the fact that the owner, the landlord, does not deserve a rent increase. Mi casero ha estado acosando en forma de no hacer reparaciones. Esto afecta el edificio entero por 23 apartamentos. The landlord has been uh, harassing us uh, with not doing any of the repairs in the building. This has affected a building with 23 units. Tantos eran las violaciones de faltas de reparaciones que la ciudad identificó como un edificio como uno de los peores. There were so many violations that, uh, in terms of repairs that the city actually cited the building as one of the worst in the city. Conseguimos ayuda de parte de la organización de vecinos ayudando a vecinos. Nos informaron de nuestros derechos y empezaron a conseguir las reparaciones. We actually were able to get the help from vecinos ayudando a vecinos, neighbors helping neighbors, um, and they informed us of our rights and we were able to get the repairs. Ahora mi casero no me quiere renovar el lease. Mi lease se venció en el 2016. No, nos, nos, nos emitimos a una queja con el Estado. At the moment, my landlord does not wish to renew my lease. My lease actually expired in 2016, and I have already submitted a formal complaint to the state. El Estado le ordenó que nos ofreciera un contrato nuevo y él se negó. El Estado está a punto de imponerle multas por no obedecer la orden de, del Estado. The state actually ordered him to offer me a new lease, and he denied that. Uh, the state is at, the, at this point going to impose um, all types of sanctions on him for not obeying the state. Es importante notar que mi casero también se quiso lanzar como señor concejal. Como, ¿Cómo es posible que él piense que él puede representar a, a, mi, a mi comunidad si no pudo mantener sus edificios en buen estado? Y conforme a la ley de viviendas de la ciudad de Nueva York. It is important to note that my landlord actually uh, wanted to become a council member. Uh, how is it possible that he could even believe uh, that he can represent the community when he can't even maintain the buildings in good, uh, in good shape? And he can't even follow the laws, uh, the, the, the housing laws of New York. Mi casero no merece un aumento. Mis ingresos no son los suficientes para pagar el aumento de renta. My landlord does not deserve a rent increase. My uh, income is not enough for me to be able to pay all of the rent increases. Agradezco su tiempo y que, que tomaron en cuenta mi petición para una mejor vida en la ciudad de Nueva York. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Okay.
Thank you so very much for your time and for having taken uh, in my petition into account um, for a better life for people in New York City. Thank you. Clara Joseph. My name is Clara Perez Joseph. I'm a tenant uh, leader for six years volunteering with uh, Fifth Avenue Committee, Neighbors Helping Neighbors, and Inquilinos Unidos. I've been in a rent stabilized apartment for um, 37 years. As you can see, my attire is an attire of mourning. The tenants are hurting, they're mourning, they're grieving, and their budgets are bleeding. We've seen tenants be displaced to go into shelters. From rent stabilization to shelter, when it should be the other way around. We've, this is an urban genocide. We've also seen friends uproot from the community and leave behind loved ones and lifetime friends to flee to another state where they could find more affordable rents. We're also mourning the disintegration of the fabric of family life. We you have low income, low middle income parents working at menial jobs for two jobs, two and a half jobs, long hours to be able to pay this rent and everything else that they need for their family to survive. The children also suffer as well. Now, um, I know that in 15 and 16, we got a rent freeze. And, seven, and then you were sued by RSA, and it was taken to Supreme Court, and you won, you prevailed. So I asked myself, why the regression? This is the time when you should have moved ahead and give us the rent freeze that we deserved, and we felt very betrayed. I see before me, Nine people, not robots, nine people, live, that can think and feel. I'm going to appeal to your wisdom, good reason, and conscience to vote for a rent freeze. What do we want? Rent freeze. When do we want it? Now. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next three speakers are Deborah Weinstein, Zelnor Muri, and Lena Melendez. Is Deborah Weinstein here? Good evening, thank you for coming. Thank you. Does one size fit all? Uh, you need to speak as close oh. to the microphone as possible. Okay, thank thank you. you. Does one size fit all? How do you compare a profitable multiple dwelling to the 400,000 NYCHA built dwellings that average a few years ago unfunded $40,000 deficit per apartment due to unrepaired, due to repairs? Does one size fit all? Or are there are multiple factors that you have to consider. There are over five million apartments in New York City versus less than a million rent subsidized, uh, uh, how's it called, uh, rent stabilized, stabilized apartments. Mm -hmm. That is less than 20% of all New York City apartments. And that is owned by 25,000 landlords. From those 25,000 landlords, 80% of them have small multiple dwellings. And from those, and all those who have small multiple dwellings are struggling the same way as the tenants are struggling. Unfortunately, they have very bad tenants usually. And I could give you, for instance, take a look at Mayor de Blasio. He claims he has three buildings and they're two family houses and uh, he charges full market rate 
as far as ten, as far as rent goes, and yet he's claiming a twelve thousand dollar deficit. You have to realize taxes are very very high, expenses are very high. Yes, people's incomes are not increasing, but when you have to send down a repair person, that repair person is charging today's market rate. And the amount of repairs that we have to pay for negligence on the parts of tenants is unbelievable. We have, uh, I don't know about your tenants, I happen to have tenants that they're paying as little as 800 and change, and then I have one Section 8 one that's paying 1833 since 2003, and has had no, 2011, sorry, and has had no increase. That woman has literally torn the inside of the refrigerator, destroyed the whole bottom of a cabinet, three bathroom doors had to be changed. Now I understand why NYCHA had to go ahead and have unfunded, how's it called, $40,000 worth of repairs. So no. Let's let the speaker finish her testimony, please. The only reason why you happen to have a rent, uh, as it called, this board to regulate the rents is because there are an average of two to three people living in this million dollar apartments. And that's, you're talking about votes of two million to three million votes. And this is all driven by politics. I feel that tenants who cannot Excuse afford- Excuse me, I'm sorry, your time's up. Can you wind up your testimony, please? Yes, I can wind it up. What I'm basically saying is, I think that if people cannot afford it, then it's the responsibility of government. It's not the responsibility of fellow citizens who are struggling to make a living to pay for the. Thank you for your testimony. Thank you. Zelnor Miri. Zelnor Miri. You may need to take the mic out of the holder and hold it close to your mouth. My name is Zelnor Myrie, and I was born and raised in Flatbush, where I live now, in a rent-stabilized apartment. My mother, an immigrant from Costa Rica, has lived in a rent-regulated building since 1990. Anchored by the security of an affordable home, she earned her college degree, started her own business, and raised the first lawyer in the family, me. We should be making stories like hers and stories like mine easier to tell. But a rent increase would undoubtedly make it harder. Last year, this board voted for an increase, but the wages of our working families have remained flat and the city is still facing an affordability crisis. To quote this board's 2018 income and affordability study, a majority of rent stabilized tenants cannot afford their apartment. Let me say that again. A majority of rent-stabilized tenants cannot afford their apartment. And a third of these tenants see half of their income disappear every month in the form of a rent check. This is unacceptable in a city with the greatest wealth on the planet, where income for landlords has gone up 12 years in a row, and where hundreds of thousands of tenants cannot afford to stay in their homes. And while tax breaks for developers help boost the numbers for new rent regulated units, it does not help our working families trying to make ends meet in the neighborhoods they grew up in, nor does it help stem the tide of gentrification afflicting our Brooklyn communities. My family's story 
My family's story would not be possible without the protection of a rent stabilized unit. And it is why I am urging this board to vote against a rent increase and do right by the city and freeze the rents. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Lena Melendez. Hi, my name is Lena Melendez. And I ask myself how this RGB can vote for a rent increase. One explanation would be there a general disdain for poor people, many of them people of color. After listening to scores of poor folks begging you for mercy, single mothers, seniors on fixed incomes, disabled people, students, low income families, what possible reason could there be for giving more to the greedy landlords? If you vote for a rent increase, you are in effect defying the scores of testimonies given by rent regulated tenants throughout the five boroughs of New York City and are participating in systemic racism. Yes, I said it. Most landlords are not people of color. Most developers are not people of color. We are poor, not lazy, not criminals, not animals, like this administration has said. Housing is a human right. Poverty is a pol political creation. Case in point, de Blasio found making $100,000 secret deals with real estate moguls and restaurant basements. Meanwhile, he's pushing for rezonings throughout the city that are decimating people of color. In Williamsburg alone, prior to the rezoning there, Williamsburg was 69% Latino, and now it's 29% after the rezoning. The MIH program is a scam. Affordable housing program, a scam. 80-20 program, a scam. People who pay more than 30% of their income are rent burdened. Poverty is a political creation. It is a part of a larger systemic portrait. When you cast your vote, I ask you to search your conscience. Ask yourself why you think landlords who are illegally deregulating rent-stabilized apartments, abusing and harassing tenants, deserve a rent increase. Ask yourself what will happen to the tenants who testified and begged you not to increase their rent. Do the right thing. Vote a rent rollback. No increase. Thank you. The next speakers are LaShawn Smith. Ah, okay. Okay. The next speakers are Allison Cordero, LaShawn Smith, and Gladys Puglia. Good evening. Uh, I would like to say, I will be very briefly, but I see there is no one uh, speaking for disabled. So I just want to say on behalf of you all, we need a rent increase, a freeze, freeze. Because uh, unfortunately, the last two years, uh, we got uh, an increase, and the most of the tenants can't bear an increase. So we need a rent freeze. I, I was an organizer for many years before I had a stroke. So I know that, uh, and I fight it for people's rights, even though actually I owned a co-op. But now I sold my apartment because I couldn't get up the stairs. And fortunately, I have a good landlord. But the, uh, many people are not living in such bad, co uh, horrible conditions. So I ask you to church your conscience and uh, I ask you to get a rent freeze. Thank you. Thank you. LaShawn <laughs> Smith. 
Hello. My name is LaShawn Good Smith. Evening. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for having me. I just heard that this was happening last night, and I had to be here. My situation is a little different. I'm a working mother, and I work very hard, and I work with an organization, and I help people for a living. And now I need help. I am working, and I'm homeless. And I have three children. I've been a victim of a crime when my life has been threatened, and so have my children. And I came here tonight so that I can be heard because there is no help for what I'm going through. I've went to council offices, city offices, 350 J Street, 330 J Street. I've been to council members' offices, and all they can do for me is hand me paper and ask me, is there anything more I can do for you? My children and I are homeless. We have nowhere to live. I am like a bird with a broken wing, but I still have to go on and help. So I'm asking you also to don't increase these people's rent, and I'm asking for a home. I'm on the NYCHA waiting list, and I am now priority in one. I've brought them my order of protections, and when I call them and I go, it could take a year or more. What if I die? What if my children die? I've been to these organizations. I caught one today, and I have nothing against anybody, but just because I'm not gay or lesbian, they turned me away. Or just because I wasn't with a man having sex and he was beating my head into the floor safe horizon says we cannot help you i've been a victim of a violent crime from my family they've threatened my life violence starts at home and then it continues and it goes generation after generation after generation so I'm asking someone to hear my plea my testimony my story other people are not brave enough or don't have the courage enough to come out and speak but I LaShawn Jean Smith come out on behalf of every other person who did not hear that this event was going on and I come and I'm asking you to keep fair housing affordable and for someone like me I need housing my children need a home they are depressed and they are hurting I call and I am the best advocate that I can be for myself because no city organization wants to advocate for my children and me my name is LaShawn Smith and I am from the Red Hook area in Brooklyn thank you Gladys Puglia. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming in. Yo estoy aquí. Mi nombre es Gladys Puglia. Vengo de Bushwick. Brooklyn, la area que se está gentrified so horrendous. We didn't say that we don't want the gentrification, but we want the people that moving in into our area know who the people were living in those apartments that they're getting now. My neighborhood had more children than any other little block had, and now there's none. We only assisting, we count people now. We're only four or five, and we will long, we will have all these blocks with family, Latinos, African Americans, different kind of countries. Now we don't. If this risk keeps going higher, I told the uh, last year I was here and I told you I was going to be homeless. I almost was, but thank you for the make the road New York with the lawyers that helped me out to hold my apartment again. I don't know next year. I'll be a homeless. But I'm going to carry my children. I'm going to carry an old elderly lady that's 82 years old that they threw her out from her room that I'm renting her a room. So
so she could have a place to sleep. Now, we hear, we want you to listen. We are fighting for our children, our grandchildren, to have a home, to have a place to live. I had two children that left my home and they had to come back. They couldn't afford the rent. So now tell me, how I'm gonna keep this apartment for them to keep living in there? Because if the rate keeps getting higher and the salaries are not helping at all. We're not getting no more higher salaries. We are getting less salary and the rent are keep going high. I just want you to listen, touch your heart, and please this rent for another time so we could keep up with this higher rates. Thank you. Thank you.